<laughs> hey guys what's going on i hope i'm in my living room right now i really hope that my puppies don't start barking um they probably might start snapping over here when i'm doing the video but if i if they do don't worry i will call my kids down amen so that they could um take care of the puppies for me amen but i hope everybody is doing good let me know who is checking in so i could definitely say hello to you guys i hope that you guys are ready for today's word i definitely wanted to come on here earlier today but my schedule just wouldn't allow me but we here it's five o'clock in the afternoon on the east coast but we're going to go hard on this video to God be all the glory today. And I hope that everything that we discuss, right, in today's video, like I said, is going to be a blessing to your life, okay? Girls, come get the puppies. I'm going to have to have them get the puppies because they're going to be whining the whole time, wanting me to pick them up and stuff. Y'all know how it is. But I hope you guys are doing well today. And as you guys can see by today's topic, amen, today's topic is going to be fake preachers casting out demons. And I feel like this is definitely a necessary video for these times because there are just so many people. God bless you, Teresa, my love, amen. There are just so many people, and I know you probably have seen them all over social media, all over these different, you know, churches across the U.S., just acting a fool on the internet, just acting a fool on YouTube. Like, you know, I feel like so many people don't even have a lot of preachers. I feel like they don't even have any respect at all anymore for deliverance. And I feel like that's a sad thing because, you know, when we look at the Bible and we look at deliverance and we look at people, you know, the disciples and Jesus and how they were casting out demons, they were doing it because they had a clean heart. They were doing it because they understood what it really meant to be a good Christian. Like they understood darkness. They understood the powers, the principalities. They understood what it was like to see people held by bondage and captive by the enemy and that's why the power of the cross is so symbolic to the christians and i feel like we got just so many fake preachers nowadays just taking advantage of that and these preachers are not even real i feel like these preachers do not even have sometimes a kingdom mandate i feel like some of them are sent from the pit to hell because they have no you know sympathy when it comes to god bless you um chris my love and um you know i just feel like so many people you know or so many of these fake preachers i just feel like they have no sympathy and they are just out there literally fooling as many people as they can and it's really sad because you got people that are really hungry for god they are really looking for the lord and they go into these churches and it's just like a big show and i say that all the time like when we go to church Church is not supposed to be a big show, okay? It's just not. It's a place where we gather as the saints to literally draw. God bless you, Miss Jamila, my love, amen. Is a place where we gather together as the saints. And I'm still going to try to call you today, okay, my love? I haven't forgotten about you, amen. Um, you know, we still, you know, it's a place for us to gather as the saints, you know? And when we go to church, we're going there to basically de-stress our mind, our heart, and our spirit. Why? Because when we are going through things, like, and I, I know a lot of people, they may not agree with me on this, but I want you to just hear me out for one second. Okay, when we talking about Christianity and we're talking about the different spirits and different demons, right? If if you go to a church, right, when the person comes into the church and the person wasn't displaying the demonic spirit, was it right? So these people that start to manifest these demons, when they started to walk up into the temple, you couldn't, you, you, there was no way for you to even know, and God bless you, Teresa, my love, amen, there is no way that you would even know that they had a demonic demon literally manifesting on the inside of them, right? It just so happens that when they at the service, right, something happens 
where this demon manifests out that person. So this is what's happening nowadays. And this is why I say a lot of fake preachers is fake and they don't got a kingdom mandate. And this is why they don't like my channel. This is why I deal with a lot of witchcraft attacks because I know that they try to silence my calling. They try to silence, you know, what God put down on the inside of me. That's why I go through so many attacks on my videos, my microphones, my phone, like the internet. Like I've gone through so many attacks, you know, when it comes to making these videos because because the devil doesn't want these type of videos to get out there because it's going to open up your eyes. It's going to help you see better in, in the spiritual realm and it's going to help you draw closer to the Lord and you're going to be spiritually discerned and not everybody has discernment. And you have to understand that, that in these days we're living in a time where there are a lot of people that they literally do not have biblical, you know, discernment. They don't know spiritual strategies. They don't know, they don't walk with biblical principles. So when they go into a church, right, they have Christians so half of the time they in and half of the time they out. So this is why the demons, when they go into a demonic church, they may, the people that are possessed, they may love God, but it may, they have open, they have open doors in their life, which makes it vulnerable for them. Right. And this is stuff that we talk about, like I said, in my private membership, but this is stuff that we really speak about and like try to help all of the women understand in a deeper level so that they can mature in their church. So they can mature in their faith. So they don't, you know, attach themselves to certain people that are going to bring spiritual curses and demonic manifestations into their life. Cause when you are real Christian, you always trying to protect protect your spirit. When somebody's speaking in tongues, the last thing that you want is somebody speaking in tongues and you being fearful that the person is like literally speaking right in some demonic tongues because you don't know what type of demonic impartation is going to come into your life from that person, you know, speaking over you, right? And and you don't have nobody there to translate, you know, what the what the tongues is speaking. You don't have nobody to interpret for you. So if you don't know what they could be doing. If and if you're not really there spiritually, you know, things could happen. Those could be like literally open doors into your life. So anywho, like I was saying, so the people that come into the church, right? Them having one foot in and one foot out, this is the reason why these fake preachers can literally play around with people like them. This is why when you look at those major churches where people are just coming in left and right, but they don't really stay there enough to like literally grow. They don't stay there long enough to be biblically discipled. Like they don't stay there long enough to actually grow root, right? To, to have a firm foundation is all about, a it's like a recycling you know, service, right? Where you have a group of people, you may have like a group of a hundred to 200 people, but guess what? Every three months they leave and new people come, right? And I'm not saying that that's bad because like, you know, that happens in all churches, you know, people go, people stay, you wish everybody could, you know, stay, but, and, and grow and develop in a proper way. But that's just not the way it is, right? It's a revolving, yes, Jamila is a revolving door. Exactly. God bless you, Glenda, my love. Amen. So, you know, when we, as the body of Christ go into these churches, right, where they having these deliverances happening, right, is very dangerous. This is why I spoke about this morning is very dangerous and confusing for a lot of people when they see these fake preachers talking about how you supposed to one, two, three, boom, deliver the demon, like right away, boom, just out of the person that it shouldn't take long, right? I want to show you in the scripture how that is a lie from the pits of hell. So when you look at Matthew 17, right? And we're going to go back into, like I said, what happens when they go in and why those demons manifest in the people, right? So here we see where um, Jesus healed a young man, right? So again, we're reading Matthew 17 and we're starting in verse 14. It says, um, the word of God is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? It says, and when they had come to the multitude, it says that a man came to him, kneeling down to him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers severely, severely. 
It says, for he often falls into the fire and into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. So imagine how this father must have felt, right? Where he couldn't heal his son. And it was very difficult for him because his sickness, this demon that was possessing him, right? They couldn't cure him. They couldn't do anything. And he was bound, right? And he kept running into the fire where he was going to automatically get burned. And not only on top of that, he kept running into the water where he could possibly drown, right? So the father being the father that he, you know, the good father that he was, he brings them to the disciples, right? the ones that are with Jesus. This is why you also got to be careful with people who be casting out demons that are up under the ministry. Okay. And what do I mean by that? I mean that sometimes you're going to go to ministries and you are going to see that the man or woman of God that's on top is on fire. But guess what? The people that are up, up, up under them, sometimes they only there for a title. They only there to be getting recognition. They only, they, if it wasn't because of who they was connected to, they literally would be a nobody, right? But then I'm telling you because I've seen this, guys. I've literally seen this with my discernment. I don't know if you guys have, but I literally have seen it with my own two eyes where people in the ministry, in the deliverance ministry, they walk around so boastful, okay? And they walk around with so much pride. They walk around with so much arrogance. So when you look at the Bible and you look at the disciples and you look at Jesus and you look at what we are being taught, right, about faith, and we look at what we're being taught about, you know, perverse spirits, right? The Bible is teaching us that we need to have a clean heart, right? We need to have a clean posture when we positioning ourselves to deal with these type of unclean spirits, right? So when you look at the word, he says that I brought them to your disciples, but they cannot cure him. Basically, he said they cannot cast them out. So he says in verse 17, he says, then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Remember what I said to you? faithless and perverse generation. And I'm going to give you guys an example, right? Even I haven't watched um, Marcus Rogers videos in a minute because I have been so busy, but I don't know. I was in the bathroom and I saw something that he had posted on his page about Kirk Franklin about something, something, I don't know what it was, but I ended up clicking on the video and I was like hit with something. I don't know if you guys have seen the video, but all of a sudden I saw Kirk Franklin whining like he was genuine. And I'm like, and, and, and they even went and put the music, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. and you see him going like this with his abs and stuff. And I started cracking up and I was like, what am I watching? I was like, yo, this is like 2023. I could not believe like the minute I had put the video, I didn't even get to go, you know, really into the message because I was like on the go. Like I said, I don't really have time to be hearing his messages like that sometimes. But anywho, I clicked it on. And what does the Bible say? It says, Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse, right? Generation. Like that was something he should have been doing with his wife. That's not something that you need to be doing in a concert, a Christian concert, a gospel, you know, place. So a lot of people, like I said, they don't know what a perverse spirit is, but that what I saw him doing was an example of what a perverse spirit is because as a father, you should not be dancing like that. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, I understand that we Christian and we not religious, but there's a time and a place for everything. And I felt like in a, in a gospel concert, like that just wasn't, that it wasn't appropriate. Like I said, if he wanted to whine like that, whine like that on your wife, like all over her, that's your business. That's, that's, you know, that's your sanctuary and you know, your bedroom that, you know, what happens in there is between you and your wife. But to do that in a public gospel setting where people were trying to connect with the Lord, you know, it just shows you how a lot of these preachers who once had the oil, who once had the anointing of God, it just shows you how a lot of people, even the elect, like the Bible says, they can be literally misled, right? So what is manifesting in their heart 
in their life is literally what they are manifesting on the outside. And it can be due to, again, open doors, or it can be due to the, you know, the things that they are, you know, their flesh is after the things that their flesh are seeking. You know, those are the things that they're feeding, right? So those are the things that are going to manifest inside of them. So we got to be very careful, right? Like I said, when you go into these churches, and you see these people, right, who are manifesting demons around you and you looking at them and you want to help them, especially if you are part of the, um, you know, um, team at church, right? You're going to try to help them. What are you going to do? You're going to try to get them involved, right? Sorry. You're going to try to get them involved. God bless you, Pastor Anetta, my love. Amen. Um, you know, so you're going to try to, you know, help them out. But what's going to happen after the, they got liber after they supposedly, right, ended up getting liberated, what is it that they do? They leave the church and, and they don't come back. And they go back to the world and they come back. And if they do come back, they come back with even more demons, right? And they never get set free. And that's why, you know, Sister Jamila... She was like, is a revolving door because this is what we see in these big churches. So when you don't preach the truth there, right? And you are a lukewarm preacher yourself. You have, you end up having a church where there's no discipleship and it's all a front. It's all a front, right? Where demons coming in and demons coming out. It's not only a physical revolving door, but it is also a spiritual revolving door. And these are the type of churches, right? Again, these are things that I talk about in the membership, things that I want to teach you guys more in depth, right? So you guys can learn more, be more discerned, right? You know, this is very dangerous because a lot of preachers don't want, you, a lot of demonic preachers don't want you to know that their church is a demonic, you know, place where demons can come in and out is a demonic playground. It supposedly looks like a church, right? It has a cross on it. It has you know, a sanctuary, it has a nursery, but it doesn't mean that the leadership and the pastors are literally walking by the word because a lot of them can just be there on salary. A lot of them can just be there because they're a nonprofit and that's just their nine to five. But it doesn't mean that they are serious or passionate about what they are doing. So when they are doing that because of the call, because of their, you know, um, degrees, because they're doing it because, you know, somebody told them they had a call and they just felt that, you know, they were supposed to do it, right? Without really having the kingdom mandate to back them up, right? It doesn't matter why they there. The point is that if they're not supposed to be there, excuse me, I don't want them there and you shouldn't want them there either. Like we should not want these type of preachers right on the pulpit playing around with the mandate of God playing around because these demons don't play. So when you are a fearful man or woman of God that is preaching from the pulpit that you know you have a mandate, you're not going to play with that because you know how many pastors die in their sleep because of demonic attacks that are either sent their way or because they have open doors negative manifestations and stuff like that. We have to protect ourselves as pastors and as ministers. So if you love your life and you're trying your best, right, to protect yourself from these demonic forces, you are not going to want to be going to these, you know, churches where it's a, it's literally a, a gummy down church where it's like, a, you know, the, it's just a horrible, it's, it's false Christianity. So when you look at those type of churches that really don't even care about the truth anymore, and it's just a revolving door, why are you even put, this is why you shouldn't even, right, Pastor Netta? They shouldn't, you guys shouldn't even put yourself in that position, because if you need God, you better off, you know, having Jesus at home. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't congregate, because that would not be biblical, right? So the Bible does say to us, that we supposed to congregate and not live like those other people, right? That, that stop congregating. We shouldn't be like those type of people. The Bible says that, yes, congregating is very important. We need to gather together all the time with the saints, but we need to make sure 
that we are right in a church where they are walking in order and it's like the police department right you see how you have so many corrupt cops in the law enforcement like in the force right and they do crazy stuff and they come out on the news like you know that they broke the law somebody's trying to bring them down and you know and it's just like a big shakedown and things like that it's the same thing with pastors like you got all these corrupt people that are going to be investigating your life throwing witchcraft like there are so many people that don't even stay in their own lane like people when you anointed one of the things that you got to understand is that that anointing is going to attract so many people in your life that don't even know how to mind their own business like that's why i wrote what i wrote this morning because we get spiritually attacked so much in the ministry for what we do and it's not fair it's not fair that we live in for the gospel it's not fair that we giving it our all and people think that they could come into our life right and be nosy and snooping around and trying to get information and trying to tarnish our our reputation with people like trying to tarnish all of our hard work right but who does that satan does that this is why as christians as bold christians we got to learn to tell people like yo mind your own business like yo stay in your own lane because when you're dealing with demons and you're dealing with principality powers that is after you and and you know demonic little minions that are like literally fake in their own walk and you gotta you know consistently try to be proving yourself to these fake people like we just don't have time for that because we're focused on the de real deliverance deliverance for people right like this young boy who had an issue and really genuinely wanted to be better literally wanted to be whole so when you dealing with these deliverance ministries is really hard because they doing all these demon rebuking dk one two three you know shows right and they're doing these little one two three deliverances but guess what the person doesn't even want jesus the person doesn't even want to be a christian so all you doing is putting on a show for people to see that you have power, but why isn't your power big enough to keep them in the walk of Christ? Why isn't your power big enough to go after them and literally try to bring discipleship into their life? Like, why don't you go after them when the cameras roll off, right? And try to bring them to church and literally really be there for them. And this is why I say that you cannot associate yourself, right? Like, amen. Pastor and others, like, you better say that, right? That's what it is. And it's like, this is why you could tell a lot of the fake preachers that put on all these, you know, events. And the events that they put on is literally a show to put their ministries on the forefront to make everybody else feel right that they have the anointing that everybody else don't have and that they can cast out the demons that everybody else can't okay and that my friend is pride that my friend okay is when you call you can say they boastful and that's why those type of people are you know fake preachers so you may not believe me you're gonna be like you know what there she go again puerto rican talking her, her junk right let's go into the word amen god bless you amen brother so what does it say every time i'm on the thing with y'all i get like stuffy nose i don't know what it is but um okay so jesus says he answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation he said how long shall i be with you he said how long shall i bear with you not only that like now jesus is frustrated he's like man how long he probably don't roll his eyes okay jesus is like why do i gotta keep dealing with y'all not only did he call them faithless because they had no faith what does faith believe say faith means that you have to believe in what is unseen and remember what i said earlier how you have a lot of these so-called men and women of god that be pumped up right up under some powerful ministries whether they powerful or not like let's say that is a powerful ministry on the left and a power and a not powerful ministry on the right or vice versa right if one is powerful and one is not and one is really led by demons if they're doing those demonic deliverances the people up under them it don't matter because you're going to be seeing the same power the difference is the fruit that they are carrying right and the fruit that they bear and this is why the bible teaches us that we need to be very vigilant 
This is why the Bible says that we need to be more concerned about people's fruit and more concerned about testing their spirit instead of trying to be always politically correct to please the same people that will like you one minute like with Jesus. Like this is why I, I don't trust people because one minute they will like you and then the next minute they look at you like you burnt toast, right? And that's exactly how it is. Yes, discernment. We can play around with certain people. Please hit the like button. Please hit the share button, guys. So other people could get on, you know, in the building. Like, and this is why, like I said, we need to be very careful again with the type of ministries that we are literally putting ourselves in. Like, because if you're going into a place that is having demonic deliverances being held and, and at that church and is a revolving door where demons are coming in and out every single day, you don't want your children, right? Because who's going to feel comfortable in that type of environment? the witches, right? The warlocks, right? Yes. They're going to feel so happy in that place because it's a church where they can manifest their powers and they can walk in disorder. They could walk in a way that is satisfying Satan. They could walk in a way that is satisfying their flesh. They could walk in a way where, um, you know, they could just do what they want. And at the end of the day, why, if, if it wasn't so, what I'm saying, then why does the Bible say that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy? If the devil is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, where is he? How is he killing? How is he destroying? How is he sent to, to steal, steal from us, right? It, the, ch the church is a perfect place, right? For the devil, the church is like the devil's playground. If the pastor is not walking right, if the pastor is not consistently rebuking demons, if the pastor is not speaking about spiritual warfare, if the pastor is a people pleasing pastor, he is not going to be warning anybody about demons and spiritual warfare because he is a people pleaser. He is a sucker. He is a sellout. Somebody that unsold the gospel. Somebody that is not, you know, walking in, 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 in the, in the spirit. Somebody that is not walking right. So at the end of the day, because they people pleasing, right? And they like to please people and they like to make people happy and they like to build connections, right? And they like to build networks, right? Because that means so much more to them. God bless you, David. Amen. Because that means so much more to them. Amen. They are not going to tell people the truth because they're going to be afraid of the people leaving them. And to them is an embarrassment when everybody else leaves them. Right. But even Jesus himself, Jesus had more power than any of our, us preachers could ever have. Right. And even though Jesus said in his word that he wants us to do greater works, right? But if Jesus himself had to go through the persecution and had to go through the motion, he had to go through the waves when he was preaching and he literally had to look at his disciples and everybody else when everybody don't walked out on him and he was like, well, do y'all want to go to like, do y'all want to leave too? And one of his disciples was like, no, I think it was P um, Peter, right? He was like, or, or John, I think it was Peter. He was like, where are we going to go? If you're the only one that has the, the words of life, like where else are, are we going to go? You know, and I feel like in this walk, you have to learn when you have real anointing, when you have a, a kingdom mandate, it's so important to have other commanding officers around you, right? To, to, to pour into your life, you know, to help you build your spirit back up, to help you you become confident again in your calling because the devil, when he comes to destroy man, he comes to tear your insecurities apart. He comes to destroy your mindset. He comes to bring confusion. He don't want you to walk in your identity. He don't want you to know that you got more power than him. He don't want you to know that you got the oil you and it's flowing as long as you staying close to the vine, right? He doesn't want you to know that you a strong branch. So he's going to do everything in his power to confuse you, right? To distract you, to discredit you. And this is why he needs to operate under these demonic churches where they can let him say and come in and out as he wants to, as he pleases. So when real Christians, you know, with the sword, okay, come out in the spirit, 
to bind demons before the service. I'm talking about like a real sister in Christ. Like, you know, before service even starts, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, somebody being at the pulpit, warming, warming it up for the service. Like, you know, people don't even do that anymore. Like people don't even have reverence for God. Like all of these people swear that they, you know, casting these demons out left and right. And it's a dag lie. Like y'all don't even got reverence. Like y'all, everybody got there late. The worshipers ain't even on cue together. Like, they don't even look like they want to be there half the time. They don't even be serious about their walk. Like, they not passionate about the instruments, right? They're not passionate about the serving the Lord and people really being delivered, right? So it's one of those churches where nobody's walking right and ain't nobody judging nobody because the minute you start doing that, they're going to shut you up. They're going to try to silence you and be like, uh-uh, we don't do that here. Like, mm, mm we don't do that here. Okay. And you trying to walk in order and you trying to walk in the, in the ways of the Lord and they're going to kick you out of the church. They're going to make you feel bad because you want demons to respect you, but they looking at you like you don't even know. They looking at you like you a fool because you don't even got the discernment to know that is a satanic church. You don't even got that discernment because if you found out about it, you would probably go crazy, right? You probably wouldn't even be able to handle it knowing the occultic killings that happen on those church altars. Like it would probably blow your mind if, and you would probably go crazy if you knew about half of these churches, how they be sacrificing and having occultic meetings and occultic um gatherings in a lot of these churches in America. Like you, were, some people gonna look at me in this video and be like, "Yo, that girl is nuts." Like she don't know what she's talking about, and that's because they got no discernment. That's because they want to try to act like there's no Freemasons out here in the cities. They want to try to act like in the city councils there ain't no demonic agents that serve Lucifer. Like that's a lie. Everybody serving Lucifer, or not everybody, but a lot of people in those city official positions are serving Lucifer. A lot of these big known pastors are serving Lucifer. Okay, so these little baby Christians, like they just want you to be quiet and go to daycare. And that's what it's like. It's like sit down and shut up. Play your part in the playground and be quiet. Like, don't ask questions. Don't do too much. Don't rebuke. Don't be in the spirit. Because you, the moment you try to do it, what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot of warfare that is going to right, rise up to I, right? In the name of the, you know, it's going to be a lot of warfare. And that is going to rise up and you're going to put yourself in an unnecessary battle because you're going to, it's going to be you by yourself with the Lord. And you're going to be battling with a group of 10 in that coven, men and women that are bombarding, you know, gathering strength from, because they're getting their powers and they're gathering strength by allowing these demons to come in and out of the church, like a revolving door. So because they allow these so called deliverances to take place. This is why you could see their pride. They try to be like, Oh, our ministry is the best. Our ministry is casting out demons. One, two, three. Right. And that is not true. I'm telling you the demons that I done seen that we done cast it out. Some of them will leave quick, but some of them, a lot, a lot of them won't. Okay, it took like three hours, five hours to, to cast some demons out because you need to know where that demon came from so that you could cast him out and know where he had the point of contact. So yeah, some people will be like, don't even speak to the demon. What? You want to know where he's coming, where he came from, where he had that authority, who sent you, right? If I go looking for one of your kids and be like, yo, I want to speak to your child. You're going to be like, you're going to speak to me first. You're going to be like, what you mean you're looking for my child? And you're not going to give me the answers I'm asking you. You come into my house, right? So you're knocking on my door looking for my child and you're not going to tell me what you're here for? Are you kidding me? So this is what a lot of people do in the kingdom of God. This is what a lot of people do. So they don't want you to ask those questions because they want to, they, the preachers want to look like if they the ones 
that have the power, right? They want to look like they the ones that got the anointing. So they don't want you to know that information because they want you to need them all the time. So it's like, if you need me, like the demon come back, you come look for me. Like that's the type of pride that they have. That's the type of arrogance that they walk with, right? So when you look at this, look at this Bible verse right here, right? Look, check this out, right? Proverbs 8, 13, it says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. So this is why you got to be careful with these fake ministers, because if they don't really fear the Lord, then what does that mean? They not going to hate what is evil. If you a fake minister, you're going to, you're going to sit at the table with the evil doers. You're going to sit at the table with the, like, you know, and innocent Christians, I do this because it's like, yo, innocent Christians are going to be looking at these videos or looking at these churches and they want to fit in with the crowd. They want to fit in with the people that's popular. Don't ever feel like you need to fit in at a table where you know dumb people is nasty. Like, you know, dumb people is living in sin. Like, you know, those people ain't even walking right in the spirit. Don't ever desire to sit at those nasty people's table because they playing with God. They nasty. They nasty. They playing with God. So it's like, they don't want to take their life seriously. They don't want to walk in order. They playing with the Lord. And it's like, they don't have no honest heart. So when it comes to them serving, when it comes to them giving, you know, their tithes and offerings, when it comes to them worshiping, when it comes to them serving, guess what? They don't got no anointing. They don't have no oil because they rebels. They walking in disobedience. They making their own rules. They doing what they want to do. They not caring about you and your salvation and your children's walk and your generations and your calling and your mandate and protecting you, you know, from the devil. They don't care about that stuff. They care about themselves. What's in it for them? They don't really care about what's in it for you unless the camera is around. They don't care about what's in it for you unless, you know, paparazzi is hanging around, you know, unless they're going to, you know, benefit from it, unless their church is going to look like, why you think a lot of those people in these big mega churches, why you think they take that money and do these little events every year where they're giving away cars like the price is right, okay? They giving away cars and, and grants and all that, and yes, that's beautiful. I'm not saying that it's not beautiful to give people college grants. I'm not saying that is not beautiful to, to give people a car if they need it. But when you have a ministry that doesn't preach on spiritual warfare and you have all this money, it should make you question where they're getting their money from. Especially if they can't be honest and speak about the devil. Especially if they can't be honest and speak about us armoring up every day. Especially if they're not talking about hellfire. Because it's okay to talk about prosperity. We all know that God is a prosperous God. We all know that he called us to be the head and not the tail. He, we know the word. We know that the Bible says we're supposed to walk in abundance and riches and glory and all that. We know that. Because whenever you really doing the will of God, you don't got to worry. Finances will come into your hand left and right. No matter what the devil does, the finances will find you because people will see the anointing. People will see the grace that you carry and they will sow seeds without you even having to beg them, without you even having to tell them because they know, amen, they believe in their heart that you are preaching a good word. And your good word is to give people salvation, is to get people in alignment. And a lot of people that don't feel that type of preaching and don't feel that is right and they feel like it's so judgmental and you're such a hypocrite and that's not the way God called you to preach and that's not what you should be focusing on right because they want to tell you how to live your life they want to tell you how to be a Christian they don't know what you've been through you know how many fake Christians I've seen that tried to come into our church and tell me what type of pastor I need to be, how I need to style my hair, how I need to, you know, put makeup on my face or less makeup or no jewelry or how I need to dress. You know how many fake Christians you, you're not even worrying about your clothes and you over here coming into the church worrying about mine. You don't even style your hair and you worrying about how I style mine, right? You're not even worried about your husband. You don't even cook, but you trying to, you, you criticizing me, but then you trying to look just like me. You trying to do what I do, but you're not called 
to do what I do. So this is what happens even to the disciples. And this is why he said to them, they perverse. This is why he said to them, y'all faithless. Yeah, y'all got no faith. You hanging on somebody else's faith. You hanging on somebody else's calling. You hanging on somebody else's garment. And that's not what God called us to do. He called us to have build our own faith. He called us to carry our own cross. So when you carry your own cross, you're not going to come carrying your cross like everybody else. The cross is going to look the same, but the purpose behind your calling and my calling is going to be completely different. But in the body, we're going to make each other look good. I'm going to make you look good just like you're going to make me look good because it's not about us looking good, but it's about making the gospel look good. It's about us not, you know, making the gospel look like a, a way that is really not like a lot of these preachers is doing nowadays. They are making the gospel to be this revolving door where people can come in and get deliverance and one, a one, two, three, pro, you know, fi I'm going to fix your problem. Don't worry. And that's that. And that's not the truth because when you start to walk in the Lord, excuse me, when you start to sanctify yourself for the Lord, you're going to have a lot of people looking at you like you weird. They're going to look at you like you weird at the doctor's office. They're going to look at you like you weird at school. They're going to look at you like you weird at home and people are going to be very biased because of your faith. When your faith is real, your faith is going to be a reflection of what the disciples had to go through. And because the disciples had to go through a whole bunch of persecution, because they had to go through a whole bunch of things in their faith and Jesus as well, because they had to be put through the fire, because they had to cross the Red Sea, because they had to knock down the giant. Like, you know, people think that it's easy to be put in prison and then go to the palace from the prison. Like, why if the anointing is over your life, why do people think that it shouldn't cost them anything? Why do people think that God has to make things easy for them? He's not. Because if it cost him, what makes us think it's not going to cost us? This is why he says, right? And, um... Proverbs 8.13, when I told you, he said, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. He said, I hate pride and arrogance. He said, I hate evil behavior and perverse speech, right? So when you look at Proverbs 11.2, he says, when pride comes, then comes what? Somebody tell me in the chat, what comes after the pride? What comes after the pride in a, in a person's life, in a person's marriage, right? In a person's, in a, in a person's life, disgrace, Amen. So when you see that disgrace comes, it says, but with humility comes what? Wisdom. Because you see, you could be walking right in the eyes of God and you could still be hit with disgrace. Some people will laugh at you like they laughed at David, right? They laughed at David when the Philistines was after him. They laughed at David when his son was Absalom was trying to attack him and people that was up under his ministry. Yeah, he was being humiliated. He was being disgraced, but he had the anointing. You see, there's a difference between walking in the anointing and being disgraced than not walking in the anointing and being disgraced by the devil because the devil wants you to be disgraced. But look at what the Bible says. It says, but humility, it comes with wisdom, right? So it says in Proverbs 16, 5, it says that the Lord detests all that are proud of heart. Be sure of this, that they will not go unpunished. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you're not going to receive your blessing. You're not going to receive because you sowing your tithes and your offering on dirty ground. On people that are, are doomed, right, to be cursed. Like it's a church, but it could be operating under the umbrella of a curse, okay? And when you have a ministry that is not teaching the first of all if y'all not I look say believe what you want to believe right I'm just being honest if you in a deliverance ministry and you can't gather together with them folks for one hour to pray they have no business being in deliverance ministry, you can be sure that those people are demonic because if they don't have an hour to pray, be, that shows you because, and I'm telling you, because even at our church, when people used to try to be on the pulpit and you came late 
40 minutes late. I told you to be there at seven o'clock for prayer and you thought you was cute and you walked up there at 745. You think you playing tomorrow? No, nope, not happening because you need to learn to be obedient to the Lord. You think that you're going to come up real cute and play the drums? No, not with this pastor, not with this woman of God. Amen. You're not going to come and play the guitar. You could take the, your little skills you got with your little hands and you could sit down and, and, and cross them tomorrow like this. Amen. That's what you could do. Cause I don't need you to, you know, come with your sacrifice. You know, like the Bible says, I need you to come with your obedience. Amen. 40 minutes of prayer is going to save your life from the devil. And when you look at certain preachers like me, like, like, like we wrong, you know, that makes you really evaluate. Or if you don't go to church like that and you hearing this for the first time, it should really make you evaluate your walk and watch the people who are on your pulpit where you pray where you seek in deliverance, where you seek in the, the Lord, right? Because the altar should be important, right? You think that a Satanist is going to allow you to come to his altar and do whatever you want on his altar? Not happening, right? So why is it that as Christians, we don't test people's spirits? Why is it that as Christians, we don't allow God to operate in our life in a way that we really feel that he should be operating? Why do we feel it's okay for leaders, right? And certain people in the leadership to get away with murder is not. If they get away with murder this is why god made an example amen of certain people in the bible he made an example of them he made an example of them when they tried to go up into the sanctuary when they try to go into the altar of the lord and they wasn't walking right you can't be in god's presence and not be walking right because you know that can bring curses upon your life right so let's go back to the word right let's go back to matthew 17, right? So y'all been learning, right? So he said he called them faithless. He called them perverse. He was like, how long should I be with y'all? How long should I bear with y'all? So what he tells the father, Jesus tells the father, like, you know what? Bring your son to me. And Jesus, right then and there, he rebuked the demon and it came out of him, right? It said, and the child was cured, right? Delivered. He was set free from that very hour. It says, then the disciples came to Jesus privately, right? So now, boom, Jesus tells the father, like, yo, bring me the child. Let me do what I got to do. We're going we're gonna to fix this situation. And he does that, right? So the father sees, right? He's a witness. He's like, okay, I brought my child to them, but they couldn't do nothing. But I, I brought my child to him, and he obviously did it, right? So he tells them in front of the father that they was faithless and that they was perverse, right? And the, he's like, you perverse generation. What does it mean to be a perverse generation? You worrying about what everybody else is doing. You perverse. Your mind is perverse. Your mind is not holy. Your mind is watching things it shouldn't be watching. It's listening to things that it shouldn't be listening to. It doesn't want to tap into the kingdom. It doesn't want to sacrifice. It doesn't want to, you know, seek God. It doesn't want to, you know, seek the spirit. It doesn't want to, you know, you know, when you don't want to gratify the spirit, then you obviously perverse because your mind is perverse. Your spirit is perverse. Your spirit is doing things that is against the spirit. Your, your, your spirit is doing things that is contrary to the spirit of God. So because you please in your flesh, right? And you, you in a constant battle, you're not going to be able to deliver a demon out of, bring something unclean out of a person because you have to deliver yourself first, right? But if you are a satanic minister, and you a fake preacher, then guess what? Then yeah, you're going to be able to do what? Demons is going to go manifest in and out of you. They're going to love it. They're going to, the demons is going to make you look good in front of the people because you not, and you're going to feel puffed up, right? This is what happened with the Tower of Babel, right? Didn't they feel like, nah, I don't want to hear, you know, about righteousness. We don't want to hear about God's ways. Like we don't need to be obedient to what the word says, we're going to make it into heaven because we want to, like, we're going to go up, up that, that ladder. And we're going to make that, that stairway so big that we're going to be in God's presence, whether he wants to or not, because we chosen and we, the children of God too. And Jesus had to, you know, the Lord had to go and do what? Confuse it, confuse them and their tongues so that they couldn't even be able to do what they wanted to do because they thought they was all that. And they really was. And God bless you, Alex. Amen. You know, so when we look at the word, when he says for them, right? So he casted them out. So Jesus, so then they said to, um, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, right? 
For assuredly, I say to you that if you have faith like a seed of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain to move and it's going to move, right? And nothing will be impossible to you. But look at what verse 21 says. It says, however, right? This kind of demon, right, does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So you see that right there, right? It debunks what those ministers say that certain demons leave one, two, three. Because if if you coming into my church, what do if 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 I if I'm walking in pride and I'm walking in arrogance, I'm going to belittle you and make you feel like you're never going to be on my level. And that's a lie. Jesus taught them and he said to them, he was like, if you have a little bit of a little bit of faith to tell the mountain to move, the mountain is going to move. If you have a little bit of faith, if you have big faith to tell the demon to come out, it's going to come out. But what is going to, right? The, right? Like she was like, one, two, three. He's like, like that with the monkey face, right? If you not walking right and, and you tell demons to leave one, two, three, and they leave, it doesn't mean that you anointed. It doesn't mean that you called by God. It doesn't mean that. So we have to get out that mindset when we see these preachers, right? Yup. Um, Acts 19 and I'm reading Matthew um, 17. Amen. We have to get out of that mindset of, you know, looking at people doing deliverances. Like if they really about that life, like Jesus says in his word that in the end times, you know, in the, many people are going to come and say to him, Lord, Lord, and he's going to be like, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, right? They're going to be like, Lord, Lord, but we cast the demons out in your name. Yeah. But you was a worker of iniquity. You walked around with pride. You walked around being boastful. Like, you know how many times people try to show me certain ministries and it's either the minister or it's either the one under him that is nasty. And you be looking at them like, yo, you need a whooping. Like, you need a old. That's why it's sad that all these old school grannies, they not even out there no more. Like, half of them done died, right? Half of them is, is in the bar, you know, who, smoking hookah, right? Is They in the world looking for boyfriends, right? They thinking they young and stuff like that. Like, you just don't really see women of God like that anymore that are, that are protective of their calling, that are protective of their generation, that are protective of their children and their children's children that really are the, the glue of the family. Like you really don't see those grandmas that be putting together them Sunday dinners anymore. Like you just don't see that like that. And if you find it is rare, you know, and you got to appreciate that because a lot of uh, people, like I said, they so into themselves and they're like, I'm not cooking. Or well, the family is divided. The family is full of drama. The family is full of division. So they all go to church, but they go to separate churches. Why is that? right? Oh, my church is better than your church. And you know, like all that stuff. And it's a crock of, of crap. That's really what it is because those people don't really know God because if they really knew God and they all Christian, they would be able to settle their differences. But obviously somebody is walking in the spirit and somebody isn't. Somebody is walking in the flesh. So sometimes the people that get persecuted, the people that get spoken about, the people that get called the black sheep, sometimes are really the good sheep, are really the ones that are walking in the light. And the people that are walking in darkness, what happens with them, right? Sorry, guys. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Right? So what happens, right, with those people? And they start looking at them like, yo, everything you saying to me, like, it just don't make no sense. And they're going to try to, you know, point fingers at each other, trying to make each other look bad and worse. And it's like all of that stuff, right? Yeah, my, oh, yeah, Alex, yes. Amen. The, they start playing the, my pastor is better than yours, right? The, my church is better than yours. Like we worship better than yours. We cast out demons more than yours. It's all a bunch of pride. It's all look up the word pride. If you don't believe me, look up, please. After this video, look up the word pride and look it up and tell me if it's a reflection. Look at, look at your pastor. Look at their pastor. Like, just look, like, look at the people you that's doing these, look at how they speak. Like, 
Like, look at how they are. Like, you could walk in truth and you could say things and be bold. I'm not saying you can. We're not religious. We could speak our mind. But if every post, everything they do, it always revolves around pride. It's always a, a prideful comment. It's always a boastful comment. That's just that will if you really smart, you wouldn't dare so many so into those ministries. You wouldn't dare. You would fear for your life. <laughs> okay. You would not dare so a dime into those ministries. Okay. And you know why you would you know why you shouldn't? Because they don't even need your money and they won't even tell you that. They will walk around like they got it like that, like they got the favor, but what you don't know is that they're satanic agencies that are providing for them. They're providing everything for them, and you don't know that. And they're trying to make it seem like, oh, we could do whatever we want with our offerings because we just got it like that. But guess what? If they really had it like that, then they would be giving good fruit. Because when you have it like that, you have more grace. That's what the Bible means when he says what you receive freely, that you give out freely. You give out the word freely. You give out the joy of Christ freely. You give out salvation freely. But you still got to walk in order. You still have to be able to do things. You, like if, if the Bible says, remember what I taught you guys in the Bible, in the word yes, the other day, or the day before yesterday, when we was talking about... um. Dag, what was the link? I, I do so many videos. I forget the comment. Um, when I would, the video I just did yesterday, the day before yesterday, when I was talking to you guys about multiplying the talents, I don't know if y'all remember the title of it. My mind is like blank right now. I can't remember that. But you remember that I was talking about how in the Bible we had to multiply the gifts, right? We had to multiply the bags of gold, right? That was the Bible speaks about in the same place where the Bible verses about the 10 virgins, right? If we, if, if as Christians, the Lord is telling us to multiply the bags of gold and that the kingdom of God is like that. And we have to take what God gives us and multiply it. Right. And he used the bags of gold as an example. What makes us think right? That we can do what we want to do in ministry, how we want to do it, the way we want to do it. No, right? Yes, right? You can't sit on your talent. Exactly. You got to multiply the bag. Amen. Hallelujah. And you cannot sit on the talents. You are supposed to share your talents, right? The borsita, right? Yes. You're not supposed to do none of that. And the reason is because your destiny is your borsita, right? Your destiny, God's destiny, the, like you have to be a soldier for the kingdom of God and you have to be yup, kingdom minded, right? You have to be anointed. You have to be stern. You got to be firm. Like you got to be, you know, it, it, it takes like when you talk about discipleship, you, if you doing deliverance ministries and you're not even praying and discipleship and you allowing everybody to just come in and lay hands and cast out demons, that's a red flag. If you could easily go, cause I'm telling you, I wouldn't dare even, yo, I fear the Lord so much that I wouldn't even let people pass out food to the homeless if they're not praying. Okay. That's the type of pastor I am. You know why? Because you have no business passing out things to the homeless. Because you don't know the type of demons and demonic manifestations, okay, that's out there. And I've seen pastors, okay, go crazy, all right, because they out there giving food to the homeless. And they are, and I've seen men and women of God go crazy and literally be attacked left and right because there are nasty, disgusting demons, filthy demons, perverse demons that are in that Satan's field. So you think Satan is going to allow you to just go in his field however you want just because you got the anointing and the grace of God? No. If it's your, if you go, your will, the will over your life, that's going to be right manifested. Yeah. Because they walking right. Yup. In the flesh. You think the devil is just going to allow you come and, and you're going to be a blessing to the people that he he's keeping bound. You're going to go after the, the, the demons that got them and pop. You're going to, these are the demons you're going to be confronted with when you go out there to bring food. Cause this is why I say, I don't like emotional Christians. You trying to tell me that I'm wrong for telling you to pray and trying to teach you how to pray. 
I'm doing my job as a pastor. I'm trying to disciple you, but you want to be led by your emotions. And then you want to discredit my calling. Like you were not only are you rebellious, right? But you, you speak in blasphemy and you ignorant, right? So people I've had as a pastor, right? I've had to deal with a lot of people like that. And they done left our church, went to another church, and guess what? Where they could do what they want to do, and that's okay. But I know that they're going through demonic attacks. I'll tell you that. Why do I know that? Why can I smile about that? Because I know how the devil works. He's not going to allow you to just go do what you want to do, and you're going to get away with that. He's going to come back, and he's going to charge you with interest. Why? Because when you go give out that food to those people in need, you're going to deal with all those demons that they have in their family, or their generational cursed demons. You're going to deal with all their dysfunctional demons you're gonna deal with all their you know dumb demons that have been traumatizing them for for years you're gonna deal with all those demons that are perverse all those deep mental health demons so people just looking at it like oh let me just give you a sandwich and a bag and and, and pray for you and 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 feel good about it that's what i mean a lot of people and they do that, they fake Christians. And the same way those pastors is fake pastors, they fake Christians because they just want to go out there with a little sandwich bag to feel better about themselves, bring in a little plate of, you know, um, collard greens and, and, and chicken and fried chicken and fried fish or whatever it is, or some chicken and Spanish rice, whatever it is. They feel better about themselves right? To do that act of kindness, to do a good gesture. So that's why they do it. They do it to be seen. It's not really because they want to be a good Christian, because if you wanted to be a good Christian, then you would want to be seen in heaven first before being seen downtown, right? You would want to be a part of a ministry that is in line with heaven first before they step foot outside. Like I'm, a, and that's what a lot of people had a problem with us, right? Cause they would look at me and be like that, you know, that I'm doing too much because I used to teach them to do what I used to teach them to close doors, right? Before we go outside, right? Like we're not about to go into that church like that, right? You, you need to pray. You need to cover yourself with the blood. Like you need to be closing doors. Cause I know, you know, a lot of these people, like I said, they may have a good intention. They may have a, a desire to do what is good. But that's not going to save me in the battlefield from those demon demonic attacks, right? And if you're not even strong enough for your family, what makes you think you're going to be strong enough to hold me down when them demons attack me? And I start feeling anxiety. And I start feeling crazy. And I start feeling like I'm going to lose my mind. Who I'm going to call to pray with? We, 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 sister, please pray for me. No. You need people that's really on fire for God. Like, you need people that's really connected. Like, man... This ministry, I know it's such a powerful ministry. I know it, but I had to go through like so many things behind the scenes that you guys don't even realize. Like even in this video with my speaking, I could feel the spirit of the Lord speaking through me and I could feel the presence of the Lord when he's around me and he makes me speak correctly because I have been dealing with so many attacks where people have been trying to make me speak stupid. Like when I sit here and tell you, like I would turn off the video and sometimes I would say dumb stuff that I don't even know why my words would get mixed up like that i know why it was happening is because of the the attacks that the witchcraft attacks that they were sending to me because i was getting revealed to them by dreams right the lord was revealing to me what people were doing to me you know so that people wouldn't listen to my messages so that people wouldn't you know look she's like benzi is like me too you see so i'm not the only one like you know people get you know especially me being a young minister, you best to believe that the oil that I carry, a lot of people don't want you to listen to me. A lot of people don't, they want to divert your heart away from this ministry. They want to divert your heart away from the things of God and they do not want you to be walking right. So they out there trying to discredit me. And they out there trying to stop and hinder me, you know, and I have to continuously rebuke them. And, and I thank God that recently this week, he has literally sent some amazing commanding generals into my life. And they have been helping me and praying with me behind the scenes and, and literally f helping me fight the battle. And it's, it's been a beautiful experience when the Lord brings really anointed people into your life that help you. Like that is to me, 
that is valuable. When people are there to pray with you, when people are there to uplift you and iron sharpens iron, like even, you know, and, and we all go through that. Like this is why I'm being transparent with you. There are times when people call me for something and I am such a strong piece of iron and I will sharpen you right. But sometimes who am I going to call to sharpen me, right? It doesn't mean that I'm going to give you such a good advice and I'm going to give you advice that's anointed, right, Erika? Covered with the glory of God. But guess what? You think that for my circumstance, sometimes I'm not, a, maybe for you, you come to me, I'm going to give you faith on, on 1,000. On 1, but when it comes to me and my situation, because the devil's attacking me so much because of what I'm doing, sometimes my faith could literally be on 100 and you don't even know it because I ministered to you so good and the Lord used me in such a way that you would never know, right? So this is why I say when you walk with pride and you boastful, the Lord will shame you because I know right, that when I see other generals that come into my life and they bless me, and I feel good about myself and their iron sharpens me to me is a beautiful thing because I'm able like, like just recently, like I said yesterday, the day before that, like I don't, the Lord done sent me some commanding generals to sharpen my iron boy. And when I tell you that my iron got sharpened in a way that you wouldn't even believe yesterday and today and these days, like, you know, this week, like you wouldn't even believe what the Lord has done in my life and how he has sharpened me in such a way that I'm pretty sure satanic agents are, are, are gathering together and holding meetings. Like what's up? Why did this now, you know, the promotion they got the, that the tax that they sent my way that made them go five steps up is about to bring them now 20 steps down because they're going to be like, yo, what the hell? She's out there preaching again. She's out there with that anointing again. Like, yo, she's back on fire. Like you were supposed to stop that. Like you were supposed to like your attacks didn't work. Like what you got, like, you know, so when, once the devil is planning one thing, he's already planning things, you know, a week in, in advance things, you know, he's planning things five weeks ago and it, and it still hasn't even hit you yet. So when it comes to us walking with humility and when it comes to us walking with the kingdom, the beautiful thing about it is that when you have a real heart for ministry and when you start to have a real hunger and a real genuine soul, a, a genuine passion for the souls to really see people not only saved and delivered, right? You're going to realize that the agent, the satanic agents and the principalities that try to bombard you are not going to be able to do things the way they used to because now you're operating under a greater anointing where the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what is happening in, in the unseen realm. And I feel like the Lord does allow us to go through those seasons. And we, I always say that we have to like literally thank God for those seasons, y'all, where all hell broke loose. Because God is going to make us come back from that. Like he's literally going to take our beauty and turn them in. You know, he makes beauty from ashes and he literally is going to anoint us. And he literally is going to give us double for our trouble. He literally is going to turn our tears into joy. Like he literally is going to manifest his power and always make sure that you one up on the enemy, even in those difficult times where you feel like you're not going to come out of that trial. Like maybe right now you might be going through something that's so difficult that you feel like you're not going to be able to come out of it. And I'm here to tell you that that's a lie from the pit to hell. The devil is a liar. and He's really good at what he does. So the same way I had to get my iron sharpened, I'm sharpening yours right now in the name of Jesus. Your pit, the devil is a liar. That sickness that you're dealing with is a lie. It's not even real. He just wants you to believe that it's real. It's a lie. You know, that, that failure, that, that, that rejection is a lie. It's a lie from the pit to hell. That's why we have to tap into, um, 
the kingdom dorothy said hallelujah amen thank you lord jesus yes amen glory to god amen all those things all those attacks happening in your life the finance attacks all of that it's a lie it's from the pit to hell don't believe it come more into covenant with the holy spirit come more into covenant with his word and you are going to see who is fake and who is not who is real and who is not who's really in it to glorify god who's really in it to to please the spirit of God who's really in it to you know like people so worried about you know just being seen instead of like being heard from heaven and I feel like that's what the biggest problem is with all these churches with a lot of these churches not all of them but like most of them it's like 99.999 percent of them it's like only really one of them that are really anointed and really called and really passionate and have clean ministries and they're probably ministries that you probably don't even know about that been in ministry for like 20 years prosperous but they just not on social media you know it doesn't mean that they may not because i've seen that there are some churches that are like that that nobody knows about but guess what they they be out there doing their thing they just don't broadcast it you know excuse me on social media but you know they their heart is in the right place amen so i you know i hope that everything you know that i spoke about with you today it really blesses your life and it really helps you analyze you know what is important when it comes to deliverance and casting out demons and because i know we want to see that we want to see God have the glory. We want to see demons coming out of people. We want to see that. And people's emotions, when they're too invested in that and not in prayer, like if you, if your heart is going to be invested in, in, in deliverance, then guess what? Your, if, if your level of deliverance is up here, then your prayer and your fasting life and wanting to connect to the spirit should be up here. Because that's what Jesus did. He couldn't go out there and do all those things if he didn't do what he did in secret, right? That's why the Bible says, whatever you do in secret, right? God will reward you in public, right? So it's the same thing with the devil. What you do in, in, in behind closed doors, what you do in the dark is definitely, even the Bible says it, is going to be manifest, is going to be made known, right? So there are demonic powers that are being, you know, put into these pastors, you know, um, these pastors' bodies, right? And there are, you know, satanic agents that are taking care of those churches' finances and you don't know anything about it. That's why, you know, they they allowing all of this to just take place up under your nose because they don't want you to know all of the things that are truly genuinely happening there. But if you ask the Lord, he will show you. If you have doubts, there's a reason, right? So you have to just, you know, listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will tell you crazy radical things <laughs> that don't even make sense. And you be looking crazy. Like when I sit here and tell you like the things that the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me in this season, some of them I've, I'm like, I don't understand why you want me to get rid of this person. Why you don't want me to speak to this person anymore. And the Lord is like, they plotting on you. They're going to, they, they plotting this and I have to be obedient and be like, okay, Lord, cause they, they, they coming out like they beautiful to me. And the Lord is like, what you see is what you see, but there's something that I see and I know it's going to hurt you to lose that person because you really need that person's support. And they have been so supportive, right? But the Lord is telling me like, you need to let that person go. And when the Lord reveals it to you, you have to be obedient. You may not have the proof, but you have to understand that the spirit reveals all things to those that are willing to, ha you know, be obedient and just handle the truth. Like he says, you know, you can't be like the, the people from that movie that be like, you can't handle the truth. No, we got to be just handle the truth from the Holy Spirit. If he says it, we just got to be obedient and do it and know that something is happening in the spirit. And, and we can compromise with the people that we hang around with. Okay, guys? So if this video really blessed your life, please hit the like button. Remember that we are doing our church fundraiser. Amen. If you want to sow into our ministry, definitely go on my website, destroyingevilaltars.com. You can find all the information there. And... I don't know, like if you like this video, like it, share it, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you have dealt with this situation. 
you know, so I, if you watching the replay, definitely let me know um, in the comment section, hashtag replay, and just stay connected, okay, guys? So remember, ladies, in the Alpha Squad, we are going to be fasting tomorrow. Make sure that you go into the private Facebook group and definitely let me know what your prayer requests are for tomorrow. Let me know if you're going to be fasting with us tomorrow. Let me know your, your prayer requests so we can pray for you tomorrow and literally send those demons to flight. Okay, ladies? So I will catch you guys in the next video. Remember that I love you guys dearly. And it's your girl, Patora Janice Batista. Catch you in the next video. Bendiciones. Yes.